for the championship game. What a halftime it was and what a game we have coming up between the Fairfield Trojanettes and Des Moines Hoover Huskies. And that will be just coming up shortly. And, of course, all the fans are being revved up here at Best Auditorium. It's a full house once again at Best, as it's almost certainly always has been and always will be for the girls' state finals. And I think that it's probably going to be equally divided among the Fairfield and the Des Moines Hoover fans, despite the fact that Hoover, of course, is in Des Moines. There's a look at some of the banners. And Trojanettes go for it, number one. They've been number one all season long, unbeaten. Last loss this team had was a year ago in the tournament. There's a Hooper High supporter. <laughs> There's the Husky right next to him. You're looking at Fairfield warming up at one end of the court, and at the other end, the green and yellow clad Hoover Huskies. Hoover, by the way, 24 and 5, and Fairfield 28 and 0 coming in. More fans as it's building and building, and will continue to do so until this championship game gets underway here tonight at Vets Auditorium. Always a spectacular between game show. We've had spectacular halftime shows, and more to come, of course, between halves of this ball game. I have to invite you to stay tuned, of course, following the contest for the announcement of the all-tournament team and bring you up to date on what is transpiring down on the floor following the game as well with comments from possibly the winning coach at tonight's ball game, depending upon the time frame. There's some of the Hoover supporters. They're directly across from us on the west side of the floor at Fairfield on the east side, and you'll be hearing roars go up throughout the ball game from these two rooting sections for the teams that are in the final, the Hoover High Huskies and the Fairfield Roganet. Now let's go down to George Turner with team profiles for tonight's game. Now let's meet the two teams that are involved in the 1983 championship game. First, the Fairfield Trojanette. Fairfield coached by Dan Breen, a graduate of Parsons College who took the job in 1972. His assistants are Mike Schenk and Barry Green. The girls were Southeast Seven Conference champions this year. They're making their second trip to the state tournament. They advanced to the final round with wins over Unity Christian 56 to 50, over North Tech 59 to 50, and over Fort Dodge 69 to 50. They've been the number one rated team all season. They're unbeaten with 28 straight wins. Let's welcome the Fairfield Trojanettes. Hoover of Des Moines Huskies. Their coach is Steve Rowe, a graduate of Tarkio College who took the job in 1978 after coaching at Aloha and Griswold. His assistant coaches are Steve Lundholm and Richard Dawn. The girls are members of the Des Moines Metropolitan Conference, making their second trip to the state tournament. They advanced to the final game with wins over Modern Day of Clinton, 59 to 44, a 90 to 70 win over Dubuque Senior, and an 88 to 51 win over Hartley Melvin. They were ranked 15th in the state, have a record of 25 and 5. Let's welcome the Hoover of Des Moines Huskies. be ready to go with a champion of champions game right after this. In rural communities across mid-America, a new symbol is showing up. It's the symbol of you, your cooperative, and Land O'Lake, where the farm-to-food system begins. That's really what farm to food system says. It starts with the ground and ends up with the food products that consumers eat. Well, as a farmer, I think the change starts with us. And as a cooperative, we try to get in on the ground base where we are furnishing the seed and the fertilizer to grow the food. The input side of agriculture is where we 
we get involved. Uh, speaking for myself, I guess I've been helping sell Analytics products uh, for 27 years, so I guess you kind of got to believe in it or you wouldn't be doing it that long. You, your cooperative, and Land -a Lake where the farm-to-food system begins. Now let's meet the players that will be playing in tonight's championship game. First to non-starters for Fairfield, Dina Holtz. <laughs> Diane McIndo. Julie Kinsella. Michelle Huckridge. Stephanie Hall. Tammy Oaks. Jean Hart. Tara Jackson. And Carla Haynes. The assistant coaches, Mike Shank. And Barry Green. Now the non-starters for Hoover of Des Moines. Santa Hawkins. Jody Carlson. Lanitra Singer. Jackie Carlson. Becky Martis. Debbie Connor. Assistant coaches, Steve Lundholm and Richard Dawn. Now let's meet the starter. First to guard for Fairfield, number 13, Laura Stump. From Hoover, number 34, Sherry Winget. From Fairfield, number 31, Lori Litton. From Hoover, number 54, Pam Rudisill. Fairfield, number 35, Joni Clements. From Hoover, number 24, Kelly Tron. Now the forward from Fairfield, number 25, Julie Litton. From Hoover, number 10, Terry Lynn. From Fairfield, number 23, Lori Lowenberg. From Hoover, number 40, Jeanette Cleveland. From Fairfield, 
field, number 33, Sam Litton. From Hoover, number 50, Jill Tallman. The coach of the Fairfield Trojanettes, Dan Breen. The coach of the Hoover Huskies, Steve Rowe. Floor officials, Bill Elliott and Jack Schultz. Bench official, Kirby Rand. We're just seconds away now from the start of the championship contest between Hoover and Fairfield. Mike Henderson, what are your thoughts before we get underway here? Well, for the 63rd time, we're going to name a state champion in girls basketball in the state of Iowa, Pete. And it should be a great game. I don't think there's much doubt in folks' minds throughout the state who follow the tournament. The two best teams are playing in the championship game. Fairfield, number one rated all year long, unbeaten. Des Moines Hoover only tied for third in the Metro. But the play that we play through the tournament, I look for a great contest. And we're set to go now. Fairfield and Hoover. Fairfield 28-0. Hoover 24-5. And the state championship is at stake in this contest. Everybody making sure everybody's ready out on the floor right now. And Hoover will put the ball in play. Gary Lynn gets it to Jeanette Cleveland. Back to Lynn. To Cleveland. Cleveland, one of the leading scorers in the tournament. We'll fill you in on that in a little bit. Gary Lynn on the right side of the floor. Whirls around. Gives it back out to Cleveland. Cleveland lob passes Hallman. And she is pushed from behind. And a foul is called on Tony Clement. Interesting matchup out front. We've got uh, one of the co-leading scorers in the tournament coming in, Jeanette Cleveland. She's being guarded by who I think everybody thinks is the outstanding guard in the tournament, Laura Stump. Inbounds pass to Tallman. No good. A scramble for the rebound and a jump ball will be called. Clement and Lynn to jump it up. As has been said so often, Terry Lynn is off that girls state softball championship team. She was the pitcher. Snap controlled by Fairfield. And so Jeanette will have first track now at getting on the scoreboard in this ball game. Julie Litton and will fouled by Kelly Cron. So each team has picked up a foul here. Kelly Cron, a 5'7 senior, draws the first foul for Hoover. And something makes me think we're going to have a loud vocal crowd at 14,000 tonight. It's nearly full. Pam Litton with the basketball at the free throw line. Gets it to Lowenberg on the right side. And the shot is a little bit too hard, but... Running over to pick it up is Julie Litton. Back to Pam, to Lowenberg. Lowenberg at the free throw line. Put the right side to Pam Litton. And we had a traveling violation on Fairfield, and Hoover will take over. Pam Rudisill will toss it inbound for the Huskies. Kelly Cron and Sherry Winget, the other guards, for the Hoover Huskies in this ball game. Up court to Tallman. Long pass is tipped away, and a scrappy Fairfield guard come up for the basketball. One official calls jump ball, the other a foul, but the jump ball will prevail here. And Jim, that's the key to Fairfield. You've got to—they have to cause a lot of turnovers for you. They've caused uh, something like 80 in three ball games. Lynn gets the tap to Jeanette Cleveland. Cleveland with the basketball to carry Lynn. Lynn to Tallman on the left side of the floor. Has the ball batted away with Fairfield guards always. Now here's an offensive foul as Jeanette Cleveland simply right over Lauren Stump, and Fairfield will take over. First foul on Cleveland, the second team foul on the Huskies, and inbounding in backcourt will be Lori Litton. 5 3 senior. Long lead pass from to the front court now. Pam Litton with the ball to Lowenberg. Lowenberg. Hold, gives off to Pam Litton. To Lowenberg along the left side. Goes out to Julie Litton. He set, shoots, and it is in and out. We still have no score in this game. About a minute and a half gone. Hoover with the basketball. Tallman, left side now. Terry Lynn. Both teams may be a little bit tense coming in here, Mike. Lob pass to Tallman. It's up and short. Rebound yanked out of there by Clements. Johnny Clements gets it ahead. Now in the front court to Pam Litton. 
Lori Lohenberg, head of the circle. Julie Litton with it. Back it goes to Pam, to Lohenberg. And she's called for traveling. So both teams might have just a bit of a problem getting on track here tonight. And the Hoover zone is really giving the forward uh, part of Fairfield trouble. They like to get inside, penetrate, drive to the basket, and the zone has really kept them outside so far. Pass tipped away by Fairfield, but Hoover gets it back. Coleman in front court now off to Terry Lynn. To Cleveland. Lynn still on the left. Moves to the free throw line and gives it to Jill Coleman. Off to Cleveland, and she is fouled by Stump. Laura Stump. Stump. Here we're going to got Coleman with the ball. But she comes through, trying to pass off to Clevin, going like through the lane. Laura Stump catches her with the shoulder, going through. Cleveland gets the ball to Terry Lynn. Lynn works it off now to Coleman. And finally a basket is dropped. Hoover takes the lead, two to nothing, as Jill Coleman gets it on the drive. Almost two and a half minutes gone before the first basket of the game is scored, and Hoover leads it two to nothing. Lowenberg on the near side of the floor. Takes it toward the free throw line. Now to Pam Litton. Back to Julie Litton. It's short. Rebound. Rudisell. And Hoover tipped loose. Stolen. Shot up. No good. And a foul is called on a rebound on the Huskies. Jerry Winget is caught for the foul. Here comes the shot off Litton from the outside. Rudisell goes to the ball. Whoops. I think he may have got fouled there, but we got still up with it. Rudisell did catch her the second time. Back to live action here. Fairfield with the basketball, still looking for its first point. Lowenberg way out front with it. Passes left side now underneath. Nice ball movement and getting the basket is Julie Litton to tie the score at two apiece. And they hit the crease of the zone that time. That's the way they're going to want to attack it. Cleveland pulls up, beats Terry Lynn from about 16. It's off the foot of the rim and Clements for the rebound for Fairfield. Passes into forward court. Pam Litton over to Lowenberg. Lori stops, feeds it right side now to Julie Litton. She's a 5'16 with a 26.4 average. Lowenberg back to Julie. And this one's a bit too hard, and we have a pushing foul underneath called on Pam Litton. These are two of the real excellent defensive teams, even though their philosophies are totally different. Hoover will be in the 2 1 zone all the time with Big Pam with the still playing center field. Fairfield all out pressure every minute of the game. Two normally high-scoring outfits, Mike, but right now it's 2-2 two to two with 4.18 to play in the first quarter. Coleman to Terry Lynn. Baseline jumper. Rolls off. Rebound, Laura Stump. In the front court she comes to Pam Litton. Julie Litton gives to Lohenberg on the left side. Lohenberg with one dribble. Goes back out to Pam now. It's a free throw line into the lane. Tosses one up. Partially blocked. And Rudisil claims it for Hoover. Lead pass in the front court for Tallman off to Cleveland. Tallman right side goes to Kerry Lynn. Lynn down the lane, passes to Cleveland. She's open and hits it. So that Cleveland has the field goal, her first two points, and Hoover leads it by a score of 4 to 2, 335 left to play in the first quarter. Lowenberg sets, shoots, set, hits. Lori Lohenberg comes back to counter as the pace picks up a little bit, Mike, and maybe some of the nervousness starting to wear off here. Gary Lynn with the ball. Gets it to Cleveland. Back to Lynn. Left side of the lane for the bank shot. It rolls in and out. And a rebound to Lori Litton. She has it nearly stolen, but Stump comes away with it, and a foul is called on Terry Lynn. And Paige Hoover is, atta is, atta is attacking the Fairfield pressure better than any team we've seen today. Here we've got that Litton coming off with a rebound, passing off. I think she just caught an arm on the way by. Yes, it was the earlier, the earlier arm. But Hoover is getting past the pressure and then setting up in their normal. I think if the shots start falling, they're attacking the pressure the best I've seen on attack. Pam Litton with the basketball. Goes toward the free throw line. It's off to Julie. Back to Pam. Lowenberg has it. Starts the drive. She's cut off nicely, though. There's a shot up and in and out of it again. Lowenberg rolls it through for her fourth point. And Fairfield has taken the lead for the first time, 6-4. to four. Cleveland with the ball. A three-on-two advantage, and the bank shot is good by Terry Lynn. So I'll predict right now we're going to have a good one, too. Litton on the right side. Pam Litton to Lowenberg. 
Lowenberg goes toward the baseline. She's double teamed, works it over nicely though for the layup, which misses by Julie Litton and Hoover with the rebound. Rudisill is fouled in backcourt. And she is fouled by Julie Litton. That's number one on her, the fourth team foul on Fairfield. And Pam Rudisill totally is dominating the rebounds at that end. She has either three or four tonight to go with their tournament leading 30. She's going to be the tournament rebound leader by quite a large margin. Hoover with the basketball. Game is tied. Terry Lynn to Jeanette Cleven. Cleven takes one outside the free throw line and gets the roll on it. Cleven with her fourth point. 8-6. Hoover on top now. In front court, Fairfield's Pam Litton throws one up and in and out. Rebound comes off to the Huskies. Terry Winget and Kelly Cron and Pam Rudisill doing a good job on the defensive end of the court for Hoover here. It's eight to six. Huskies on top. Terry Lynn is bumped and the foul is called on Litton. Lori Litton picks up the foul and that is her first. One and one in effect right now as Terry Lynn will go to the free throw line. The whole Hoover team is exceptionally good free throwers. Uh, Lynn at 67-9 is, is loose as much, and uh, she looks to me a better than a 67-9 free throw. She's 11 of 17 in the tournament and makes this one. Lynn has her third point, and it's 9-6. Huskies by three. Terry Lynn trying to build the advantage to four. And it rolls off. Follow up though, short by Tallman, and we have a foul on a rebound called on Tallman. And it'll be one and one at the other end of the court now, with 1.43 left to play in the first quarter, 9 6. Huskies on top. Lori Lowenberg will be at the free throw line. He's had quite a tournament from there, 24 28 in the first three contests. Not too bad, is it? 56 total points in the tournament. Shot rolls off the rim. There will be no bonus this time. And Hoover with the basketball. Rudisell gets it ahead. Jeanette Cleveland with the ball off to Jill Coleman. Back to Cleveland. Driving toward the left side of the lane. But has to pull up and goes back out front now. Terry Lynn with it. Lynn. Pretty well bottled up and forces the pass. And it's intercepted by Stump. And a foul in backcourt is called on Cleveland. Those guards from Fairfield just don't slow down a bit. They keep going after you. Numbers one and two in the interceptions in the entire tournament. Number 35, Joni Clements has 16. Number 13, Laura Stump is second with 12. And Lori Lohenberg is back at the free throw line. She has four points in the game, and the free throw is good, giving her five. 9-7 the count. Hoover on top here with only one minute and 21 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Lowenberg makes good on both attempts. She has six, and it's 9-8. Huskies by one. Half-court pass, and Tallman comes up with it to Cleveland. Cleveland on the drive, flips it off to Tallman, and right back to Cleveland. Set shot is up, and rolling out. No good. Rebound pulled away by Lori Litton. Fairfield loses the ball, though, on the air and pass. Van Hooper will get it right back. We mentioned the matchup of uh, Jeanette Cleveland and Laura Stump. Equally important inside, Joni Clements and Jill Tallman. Hoover to inbound. Terry Lynn just kind of hands it off there to Cleveland. Back to Lynn. Tallman, right of the lane, goes into the lane. Finds Cleveland on the left side. Cleveland almost walks, but didn't. Missed the shot, now runs the rebound down deep in the left corner. Cleveland comes back down the lane, up, and it rolls in. She's fouled, and the basket will count. Quite a play by Cleveland. First of all, hustling to get the ball, then getting it down on the roll, and also drawing the foul. John Stump, and that's two on her. That could be a factor. She was living on borrowed time on that one. She maybe even thought she had traveled, then scrambled to get the ball. Really made a fine move through the lane. Three throws. Up and down as Hoover is now one out of three at the line. Huskies lead it 11 to 8. Throws it up in the front court. Lowenberg on the far side of the floor, coming toward the lane now. To Pam Litton. Double team kind of throws the pass almost between the legs of Rudisill. Now it's out on top. Lowenberg right side in the lane. Shot is short, but I believe she was fouled, and she was. Kelly Cron commits the foul, that's her second. 
And Lowenberg will be at the free throw line and let's see if we can pick up the foul here. Oh. Okay, we get the ball outside to the Lowenberg. Come through, converge on her. Got it right there on the way up. That pass didn't almost go between Cameron and Stokes Lake. It did. It did, didn't it? Yes, it did. Free throw is good by Lowenberg, so she's three out of four at the line, has seven of the nine fair field points. It's 11 to nine. This one is up and also good. One point Hoover advantage as Lowenberg has her eighth point. Now here's a steal by Stump. Gets it right back into the Fairfield forward court. Pam Litton gets it off to Julie Litton. Back to Pam with eight seconds to go. I would imagine they'll hold it here and start the second quarter with a basketball. 11 to 10, Hoover on top. And Fairfield's intent to let the clock go down. And that's the way it ends here in the first quarter of the Girls' State Championship game. The score is Hoover 11 and Fairfield 10. We'll be back after this. Cooperative and Land O'Lakes. Team players to help America grow. I think it's kind of a team concept that starts at the farm and it involves everybody along the line and Land O'Lakes is involved in this very much so. And teamwork means that everybody is working towards the same end. It's teamwork from the beginning to the end because everybody is working together to get one job done. You, your cooperative and Land O'Lakes where the farm-to-food system begins. Back at Vets Auditorium, 11 to 10 at the end of the first quarter, Hoover and Fairfield. Mike, what about some shooting statistics? Well, I think attention of playing for the state championship showed on both teams in the first quarter. Hoover, 5 of 13, 38 fives, Fairfield, 3 of 11. This Fairfield team's explosive beat. Last night, they were leading court dies by four points late in the contest round off an 18 to 1 streak they can do that and it's always triggered by the interception the big play defensively incidentally Melanie Brewer is the leading scorer in the tournament now from Fort Dodge with 124 points and Jeanette Cleveland was tied with her heading into this ball game tonight and so she would need 38 points to become the tournament's leading scorer she has six in the first quarter 11 to 10 Hoover on top Fairfield though with a basketball ranked number one all season long Side to the other Litton and out of bounds. It'll be inbounded by Fairfield. How did you like that defensive play by a big bro? Rubisdale went after it like she was Laura Stump. He's got awfully good quickness for six feet tall. Fairfield inbound. Pam Litton comes away with it. To Lowenberg. Lowenberg works it over to Julie Litton. Her shot is good. Julie Litton with her fourth point and it's 12 to 11. Fairfield back on top by one point. And Hoover now in front court. Cleveland with a pass to Tallman right to her fingertips, though, and out of bounds. The Valkies have turned it over. Inbounding in back court. Fairfield in the guard court. Laura Stump with the ball. Lobs it ahead, and we have a foul called on Stump. Laura Stump had just picked up her third foul as she tossed the ball into front court. She ran over Kerry Lynn. And that is three on one of the premier guards here in the tournament. And they're going to rule she wasn't in control of the ball. We're going to go ahead and see that one and one. Kerry Lynn goes to the free throw line. She has three points in the ball game. One out of two in free throws. Good on the first attempt. So Lynn has notched it up here at 12 apiece. And we'll try to put Hoover back in the lead with 30 seconds gone here in the second quarter. It's up and good again. Five points for Lynn and Laura Stump is going to come out of the lineup. And checking in will be Diane McIndoe. And Diane McIndoe had a great game off the bench last night. She had six steals in last night's game off the bench. Fairfield trailing Hoover by one, and the Fairfield guards have it in backcourt. Looking ahead to the forward court, we have a traveling violation called. And McIndoe's the one that threw that length of that length of those court pass that was issued to start the show, too. Hoover back with the basketball. Jeanette Cleveland gets it to Kerry Lynn. Straight down the lane she goes and misses the layup. Tallman follows and misses a follow-up. And a jump ball called on the rebound. Well, Hoover's had good shots the last couple of opportunities. But the Huskies not getting the roll, and 
was seeing Coach Dan Breen, uh, one of the most excitable coaches in the tournament. Dan is usually never complaining at anything. That's his nature. I think he was not happy with the way Kerry Lynn had that wide open lane on the initial drive. And we'll jump it up again. Lynn and Litton, and Kerry Lynn gets the tap to Cleveland. Lobs it to Tallman, right underneath for the layup. Bill Tallman has her fourth point, and Hoover goes to a three-point lead at 15 to 12. Fairfield back in the forward court. Pam Litton to Lowenberg. Free throw line, nice fake down the lane, and the shot is short, but she draws a foul. It's on Kelly Cron. I have three on Kelly Cron also, so. And I expect to see Kay McCurgan, who also had an outstanding game off the bench last night. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Kay McCurgan is into the lineup. Placing Kelly Cron. At the free throw line for two, Lori Lowenberg. First one hits the front of the rim. Four remains 15 to 12. Lowenberg will try it again. The seventh attempt already at the free throw line tonight, and this one also rolls off. Hoover with the ball and the lead at 15 to 12. Jay McCurgan into the lineup at the guard court for Hoover. Now it's in the front court. Tallman up with a shot. Rolls out again, and she fouls on the rebound. Jill Tallman picked up her second. Mike, you'll see on the replay here, she had good position. Well, I'm going to look at the, look at how she missed the shot, because she did square up well. Bothered. Boy, that thing just didn't want to fall, and then she got frustration, came back over the back on the rebound. Came over the back of Clements. Well, see, I know we switched switch free throw shooters now on the designated shooter. We're going to use Litton. You're right. Julie Litton gets the first one in. She has five now. 15-13, Hoover on top by two. Now, uh, Julie's had a bad shooting free throw tournament, too, 27 to 34. They can all shoot free throws in the night. This one off the back of the iron, though. I thought they could. Hoover with a basketball, 15-13, Huskies by two. In front court, Terry Lynn comes away with it, gives to Cleveland, down the right side of the lane, up, no good. Rebound, finally, Fairfield coming up with it. Lori Litton, wrapping all over the floor, gets the loose ball, and Lowenberg has it for the Trojanettes. Around the three-point arc, he gets it back now to Pam Litton. Got up by Julie Litton, and a foul is called underneath on Pam Litton. Her second, and will go shoot a free throw at the other end, and Cleveland will be at the line. And Cleveland has an unbelievable total of 43 of 57 free throws in the two games. She's just a few away from the all-tournament record. Steve Rowe makes his Hoover team practice free throws a lot. I know that. This free throw is up and good by Cleveland. You have to hit something like 83 or 84 percent before you let the team leave the gym. I think you have to hit something like 22 in a row. They might not let us keep our rent on this building that long. I don't, mean, I don't know. Cleveland makes them both. She has eight at Hoover. Has the lead by four with 6.09 to play in the first half. There would be a little trouble now in the guard court, but McIndoe comes down with it and gives the pan lift to Lowenberg. Zoe Lowenberg coming to her left. Pan lift and shot short. And Hoover comes up for the ball. Sherry wins it. In the front court now, Cleveland. Back door to Kerry Lynn. She banks it up and misses it, but gets the rebound, and it's good. Kerry Lynn with her seventh point, and Hoover is up by six, 19-13, with 5.30 to play in the first half. Lowenberg over to Pam Litton. To Lowenberg on the right side. And we have a timeout called by Fairfield. So Dan Breen wants to talk it over with the Fairfield Trojanettes. They're down by six points. 1913 Hoover on top of Fairfield will be back right after this. The great Midwest. Our crops help feed the world. What we're talking about is feeding the world. And we're sitting in the breadbasket of the world, and it's more than just raising corn and soybeans and hogs and cattle. We're talking about producing food to feed people. A lot of days gets past quitting time and you think you still want to go at it so I, I guess I enjoy being able to, to feed people you your cooperative and land a lake where the farm to food system begins 
there is one familiar face to the entire state of Iowa, former Governor Robert Ray, who was the governor of this state for 14 years, but he's been coming to the girls' state basketball tournament. I guess since his high school days, I understand he even sold a little popcorn down here at the girls' state tournament or wherever it might have been at that particular time. So it's good to see Governor Ray back in Des Moines, now in business in Cedar Rapids, and his lovely wife, Billy Ray. Now let's check this play we had shortly before a timeout. Okay, call. here we, we go. This is a happens. crossover by McClevin. Look at it. Beautiful wide open. Didn't get the ball down, but come back with the offensive rebound, put it up. That was an awfully good play. That's going to start falling for long. And now as action resumes, we have a foul away from the ball called on Pam Litton, and she has picked up her third foul. So on the Fairfield side, Laura Stump has three, Pam Litton has three, and Kelly Cron has three for Hoover. And going to the line will be Cleveland once again with a score 19-13. I'm gonna write it down. Laura Stump went out, Hoover was leading by one at 13-12. I think they have trouble pressing when she's on the bench. Free throw is good by Cleveland. Her ninth point. And she's now dropped three consecutive free throws to make it 20 to 13 Huskies. So that's Cleveland is a 5-7 senior. It's no good on the next attempt. And Clements comes out with the ball for Fairfield. The Lori Lippman backcourt. The McIndoe and now ahead into the forward court. Lowenberg with a shot. Good. Lori Lowenberg has 10. 20 to 15. Huskies by five. Gary Lynn on the right side of the floor. In the middle of Tallman and backs it in now. Gets the screen and goes to Cleveland. Cleveland with a pass, but she caught for the travel before the pass. And Fairfield will get the basketball. And Fairfield surprised everyone in the auditorium on that one. They pulled off their pressure feet, went into a thinking man-to-man. -man. In the last four years, I've probably seen him play 20 games. I never saw him pull off the pressure. Back the other way, Fairfield with the basketball. Pam Litton has it. Out to Lowenberg. Toward the lane. Julie has it. Julie Litton with the ball over to Pam Litton. Free throw line shot. No good, and Rudisell claims yet another rebound for Hoover. That's six tonight, 36 for the tournament. Long pass into front court, and coming away with it is Jill Coleman. Right side to Cleveland. She's got the shot, but it won't fall for her. Clement with the rebound for Fairfield. Lori Litton in back court. Works ahead to Diane McIndoe, and she hooks a little soft pass into front court. Lowenberg, right side. Julie Litton. Gets it back to Pam to Julie. Her shot on the way. No good. Julie gets it back. Nice fake and draws the foul. Julie Litton with a little head fake there. She was fouled she by the McGurkin. She got the Hoover guards up. Okay, we're going to look at it because she caught him in a switch. See, Ruta sells right on the outside left. She caught him in the switch. When McCurgan pulled out, she didn't get far enough out to get the good position and went ahead and fouled. At the free throw line is Julie Litton. And it rolls off. Julie still has five points in the game. 20 to 15. Lynn behind the defense and gets the layup. Gary Lynn has nine. A very interesting statistic. Turnovers, six each. Fairfield usually has course double what they have themselves. Out front of the ball is Lowenberg. Right side. Julie Litton back to Lowenberg. This is Julie. Lowenberg at the free throw line. Moves to her left. Stops. Turns around. Julie Litton has the ball over to Pam now. Back to Lowenberg. Down the lane she goes and it's good. Lori Lowenberg doing a good job keeping Fairfield closer. She now has 12 points. Of the 17, Fairfield has scored. Cleveland passes to Tallman. And the ball is off and down and grabbed by Clements. Clements came into the ball game, averaging five rebounds a game. I'll bet she's pulled down four at least so far in the game. Now a steal by Hoover. McCurgan comes up with it, and the Huskies have it back. Kerry Lynn lost control for a moment, but gets it back to Cleveland. Cleveland likes that left side of the lane and drives easily for the layup. She has 11 in the ball game, and it's 24-17 Huskies. Lowenberg 
Works it right side. Julie Litton comes back to Pam. Over to Lowenberg. She's left open. Takes the shot. It's a little short, though. And a rebound and a foul is called on Hoover. Sherry Winget picks up the foul. And Julie Litton will be at the free throw line. And here comes Clemen with a crossover. Just crossover beautifully. Took, took Diane McIndoe to the hole. Took a crossover step and went right straight to the back. They're attacking the pressure extremely well. Free throw is good by Julie Litton. And the answer to your question, Tony Clements says seven rebounds. Oh, she's well over her average good. 24 18. Hoover on top here. And Julie Litton will try to slice the margin to five. It's good. She has seven. 24 to 19. Huskies with that long pass. Cleveland gets it to Tallman. Bill Tallman. Jerry Lynn back to Tallman. Off to Cleveland. Oh. And that's two points when she's got that kind of a shot. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ball movement. Huskies continue to work it around very well. Now Fairfield trailing by seven with the basketball. Substitution. Dina Holtz is in the Fairfield lineup now as the shot is up and off by Julie Linton, but she draws a foul. And it's on Kay McCurgan. That's her first. Oh. Dina Holtz, a 5'7 junior, is in the Fairfield lineup replacing Pam Linton. Yes, and Pam was really having trouble getting on track tonight. She has not scored after hitting for 53 points in the first two count three conferences. And averages 22 and a half points a ball game. Free throw on the way, rolls it and out. Hoover with a rebound. Winget. Huskies have it in front court. Cleveland down the lane to Tallman. No good. Tallman gets a rebound, slapped out. Cleveland gets it back. Goes up for the shot. No good. Scramble for it, and who else comes out with it? Clements, who has been doing yeoman work on the boards tonight. 26-19, Hoover on top. Left Fairfield with a basketball. Lowenberg to Julie Litton. The Holt back to Julie Litton. The shot is up and off. Holt runs it down, though, for the Trojan X. This shot rolls in. Dina Holt takes her first shot of the ball game and drops it through to make it 26-21. And if, if, if truth is known, Coach Dan Marine didn't want her taking that shot. Cleveland with the ball. Just outside the free throw line, down the lane. Can't get the bounce. Clement with the rebound once again. 42 seconds to go, 26-21. We're nearing the end of the first half. Hoover with a five-point advantage, but Fairfield in the forward court. Lowenberg goes to the free throw line. Over to Holt. Right back to Lowenberg. Nice fake again. She hands it off to Pam, or rather Julie Lippin. Julie works at the Holtz on the right side. Comes to the free throw line, 20 seconds to go. Julie Litton with it. Off to Lowenberg, they're gonna play catch Mike and run it down here and take one final shot, try to draw within three, it appears, before the half. And I, they're lucky they're not down by about nine or 11 with a stump on the bench. Lowenberg gets that shot with five seconds to go, her 14th point, two seconds. Cleveland lets it fly, it is no good. It would have counted had it gone in, but it didn't, it was short. And the halftime score is Hoover 26 and Fairfield 23. We'll be right back for the Hall of Fame awards after this. It has been said that of all the land in America, there is none which grows better than this, the land of Iowa. The farmers always the background whenever you mention Iowa, that is what people think of as the farms, and that has made Iowa what it is, and I'm proud to be from Iowa. It is from these roots that Iowa yields her greatest harvest, a harvest that helps feed a nation, a world. I've been going through the backbone of this entire nation, and not roots of Iowa. Uh, this is pretty well, uh, pretty well bright. Without the farmer, the consumer can't live. And without the consumer, the farmer can't live. Either. We gotta work together. We've gotta work together. The theme for Iowa, for all of America, and the theme for your cooperative and Land O'Lakes. 1,300 cooperatives throughout Mid America working together to make Iowa, farmers, and the nation grow. You 
Village of Cooperative and Land O'Lakes, where the farm-to-food system begins. According to a study by the National Organization for Women, the state of Iowa leads all other states in girls' participation in high school athletics. 50.6 of the athletes in the state are women, and Iowa leads all others by a wide margin. A representative of the Iowa Department of Public Instruction was recently quoted as saying that Iowa's rich girls' basketball tradition has done wonders towards expanding opportunities in athletics for women. In basketball and swimming, more girls go into college athletics than boys. Of some 600,000 girls that have competed in girls' basketball over the years, 160 have been elected to the Hall of Fame. Tonight, three new honorees will be presented victors for Victoria. This year's honorees will be escorted by the 1983 cover girl from Ballard of Huxley, Angela Peterson. The trophies will be presented by Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Director Louise McCormick. The year 1975, Veterans Auditorium, the first game of the state basketball tournament. It brought defeat for the Adel girls, their first loss of the season, and marked the end of this lady's remarkable career. In her four years of competition, the team lost but five games while she was a starter, and each of her last three years, the team was unbeaten entering the state tournament. The overall record for the last three years was 67 and three, with two of the three losses coming in the state championship game. Her junior year, she was elected captain of the all-tournament team. In each of her final three years, she scored 1,000 points or more, and her senior year, she led the state in field goal percentage, 66%. Upon graduation, she enrolled at Grandview College and averaged 8.2 points per game, playing with Hall of Famer Deb Coates. She then played two years at Central Missouri State University at Warrensburg before an injury turned her thinking to academia. She graduated cum laude a year later in business administration, specializing in data processing. She was also a three-time first-team All-Stater in softball as a catcher and utility player, and was also All-State in track, throwing the shot and discus, and as a 400-meter runner. She was first-team All-State in basketball both her junior and senior years. Her junior season, the team averaged 95.2 points per game to lead the state, and for the last three career years, the team averaged over 90 points per game, while her average climbed to over 45 points per game her senior season. Her coach, Golden Platt coach Larry Niemeyer, said she was the hardest working player he had been associated with, and remembers her going through three pairs of leather basketball shoes between eighth and ninth grades, learning the moves and shots of a post forward. In talking with Joyce about her high school career, she said that the team was everything, overshadowing her own accomplishments. It was only fitting when she stated she would be sharing the Vicky with all of her teammates, further saying that Julie Gid Goodrich made this award possible, saying Julie always got me the ball when I was open. Now employed at Mutual of Omaha in data processing, still a team player, welcome from Adele Hall of Famer Joyce Elder. The career of our next Hall of Famer ended in 1972 in the first round of the state tournament with the second consecutive loss to Mediapolis. However, the two losses were separated by 57 straight wins and a state championship for the Farragut girls. She was named first team All-State her junior and senior seasons, and her junior year was named to the All-Tournament team. During her four years of competition, the team had a record of 113 wins against only six losses, four of which were in state tournament play. She was named All-Conference two years, All-Southwest Iowa, and after the 1971 season, all six starters from the team were awarded All-State honors. During high school days, she also competed in softball and track. Athletics, however, were not her only love. She was named to National Honor Society her junior and senior years, a State of Iowa scholar her senior year, and graduated number one in her class. Four years later, she received a bachelor's degree in zoology from Northwest Missouri State at Merrillville and graduated with highest honors. Her education continued at Kansas State, where she received a master's in physiology in 1979, 
staying for one year as an instructor and lab technician in the School of Veterinary Medicine. Then wanderlust struck, and she journeyed to Homer, Alaska, where she worked as a veterinarian's assistant for two years. This past fall, she enrolled at Colorado State University to become a doctor of veterinary medicine. Upon graduation, she expects to practice in a small town with the dream of returning to college as a professor in the School of Veterinary Medicine. From Farragut, one of the fine guards ever, and now Hall of Famer, Terry Brannan. In 1974, this lady led her team Manila to the state basketball championship, led the team in scoring, and was elected to the all-state tournament team. She was just a sophomore. The next two seasons, the team returned to the state tournament, was led in scoring by the same young lady, and her senior season advanced to the final game before losing. She was on all-state teams her sophomore and junior years, and her junior season was named first all-state. During her four-year career, the Manila team had an overall record of 113 wins against only four losses, with only one regular season loss. She was the youngest of five sisters to play in a state tournament, and she played with two sisters on the state championship team. During her junior year, she hit 85 consecutive free throws in a sectional championship, a record that still stands. After graduation, her career continued at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. She still holds seven collegiate career records, including career scoring, season scoring, and season average. She was four times the team's most valuable player, was honorable mention All-America on two teams, second team All-America on another, and twice was voted the University Woman Athlete of the Year. In high school, she competed in cross country, helping the Manila team to three team championships in four years, while finishing seventh, fourth, and second individually. At New Mexico, she competed in cross country her freshman year with the team finishing 11th in the nation. In basketball, she scored over 20 points, 26 times in college, including two games over 30. She had a career high of 12 rebounds in a game and many others of 10 or more. She is now teaching at Jefferson Middle School in Albuquerque and is assistant coach of the Del Norte High School girls basketball team. From Manila, please welcome Hall of Famer Jean Rosterman.
for a moment to let these stations on the Iowa Girls Basketball Network identify themselves. In rural communities across Mid-America, a new symbol is showing up. It's the symbol of you, your cooperative, and Land O'Lakes, where the farm-to-food system begins. Naturally, the what farm-to-food system says, it starts with the ground and ends up with the food products that consumers eat. Well, as a farmer, I think being charged with that, and as a cooperative, we can get in on the ground base where we're furnishing the seed and fertilizer to grow the food. This lovely lady represents 20,000 Iowa High School girls basketball players. She's the cover girl on the program all week long. Her name is Angie Peterson. Now her city's Huxley. Her school's called Ballard. And there are several other cities in Huxley Ballard, right? Yeah, Ballard is a consolidated school, which is Huxley, Slater, Kelly, and Cambridge. Angie, why do they call it Ballard? Well, there's a Ballard Creek that runs through all four communities, and that's where they got the name Ballard. Well, this young lady is an outstanding basketball player, one of the top ten in the state this year in block shots. What kind of a season did your team have? We had a really good season this year. We were 18-2, and two, which was the best season Ballard girls have ever had. We won the conference for the first time this year. And she knows something about a classroom. She's 3.2 academically. Her four-year status uh, in the band, she has a lot of extracurriculars. What about this big, fabulous week being cover girl? Oh, it's just been great. Everybody's been so nice and helpful, and everything's just been great. Now, oh, Angie, I have a feeling you're going to be back at Veterans Auditorium next week. Yes, our boys are coming down next week for state tournament. And my scouts tell me you might also be watching South Hamilton. Yeah, I'll be down here for South Hamilton, too. I think there's a young man in South Hamilton that uh, she's going to be watching, too. How much more family is there at the Peterson house? big family and a big future. What do you plan to do? Well, I plan to go on and get a four-year degree in industrial management. We wish you all kind of luck. We'll see you when we have the all-tournament team, Angie. Okay, thank you very much. The Cover Girl, 1983. Let's go back to Pete Taylor. Thank you very much, Frosty. This championship game between Fairfield and Hoover is brought to you with pride by Land O'Lakes and your cooperative handling Land O'Lakes products and services. Now let's look at these halftime stats, Mike, and the shooting percentage is a little bit off, but the uh, intensity is there. Go ahead. Well, of course, the intensity is there. You did mention field goal shooting down. Hoover is 10 for 29, 34.5. Most importantly there, Jill Tallman is only 2 from 9. She's had some good inside shots. Fairfield, 8 for 23, 34.8. Rebounders we talked about. Tony Clements with 9. Pam Rudisill with 7. Most importantly to me, Coach Dan Breen was lucky, I think. He took Laura Stump out of the game at 7.30 in the first quarter. With it trailing by one, one point, Hoover got that up to seven, had a chance to get it to nine twice, didn't. He came in trailing three, I think, Fairfield fortunate. Still a very close ball game here, 26-23 at halftime. Hoover leading top-rated Fairfield. Those that have to unbeaten this year, 28-0. Hoover trying to come from a tie for third place in the Metro Conference all the way to the state championship. And so far, the Huskies have the three-point advantage in the ball game. Fairfield, though, has the ball as we look at the cheering section to start the second half. Now back to the court. Pam Litton with a basketball on the right side goes to Lori Lowenberg. Couple of dribbles, they leave her open, so she takes that shot and hits it. 16 points for Lori Lowenberg in a ball game, and it's a one-point lead now for Hoover. Cleveland to Carrie Lynn. Lynn on the right side comes back to Cleveland. 
Notice this time Stump is guarding Lynn here in the second half, leaving her off Cleveland. Lynn gets the ball to Jeanette Cleveland, and the shot goes right through there. 15 points for Jeanette. 28, 25, Hoover on top here at best. Sam Litton, over on the left side to Lowenberg. Puts it over to Julie Litton, fakes and goes across the free throw area. Now here's Sam Litton to Julie Litton. Work seems to have wide open shot, it appears right now. And traveling is called. A little shuffle of the feet and a turnover as Hooper will get the basketball. Rudisill will put it in play for the Huskies. Just a little intimidation by Pam Rudisill there, too. In front court, Huskies have it. Stallman, and now Lynn has it taken away by Stump. Quick pass into front court. Lowenberg at the free throw line turns around, has to slow it up a little bit now. Pam Litton. Julie Litton goes to her left. Lowenberg to the baseline. Beautiful feed for the layup, but it does not go in. Julie Litton wide open, could not get the layup in after a perfect feed on the play from Lori Lowenberg. In front court, Tallman with it. Hoover with a three-point lead. Lynn in the lane, moved out to the right side. Tries a backdoor pass, but Fairfield comes up with a steal once again. Lori Litton on the steal. In front court, Lowenberg takes the shot. Good! Lori Lowenberg has 18 points, and it's a one-point game again with 6.15 to play, 28 to 27. Huskies on top. Gary Lynn has a little trouble controlling the ball. Here's Cleveland. Cleveland down the lane, and a foul is called, and it is on Cleveland. Offensive foul. I think they got her for shoving off there. She went down the left side of the lane. We're going to look and see, Pete. I think she probably shoved off with that, with that right elbow, too. Right there, right there, right there. 28-27, Hoover with the lead, and Fairfield with a chance to regain the lead in this ball game now. Stump, long pass stolen away by Winsett for Hoover. Good work by the Hoover guard coming back the other way. Terry Lynn with the ball, gives to Cleveland, and a whistle, and a foul is called on Lori Litton. Just a second. I think that might be a good move by Dan Green, putting Flora Stump on the lead. I really think Lynn's the key to the first pass that Hoover makes offensively. I think it can help their pressure situation to have Laura Stump, number 13, on Terry Lynn, number 10. Inbound pass underneath goes Lynn to slip it out front. Cleveland inside the free throw line. Hits the front of the rim, though, and Stump comes up with a rebound. Stump with a dribble and gets rid of it now to Clement. Hoover crowd is asking for a double dribble call, but to no avail. Lowenberg in front court goes to her right. Pam Litton back to Julie at the free throw line. Lowenberg, who has been the top scorer here for Fairfield tonight with 18 points. He has the ball again, and it's good again, and Fairfield has gone out on top now. 20 points for Lowenberg, and Fairfield has taken the lead, 29 to 28. Cleveland passes, Tallman shoots it ahead. That didn't take long. Hoover got it right back by a point here. The scoreboard mixed up on top. I'm sure it's saying that Fairfield is at 31 to 28. That is not correct. I have 30 29 in my book, Pete. So do I. Hoover. Hoover is on top by one point. Shot is up and good, though, by Julie Litton for her ninth point from along the baseline. And now Fairfield is back on top. Forget the first half field percentages. That half's gone. It's going to be different this time. Gary Linda Tallman. Tallman has it knocked away and a foul on Stump, and that is number four on Laura Stump. Okay, we got Terry Lynn with the ball. She's going to feed him with a lob pass to kill Tallman. Inside position. Here comes the arm inside for Stump on the baseline. The baseline girl caught it. Hoover with the basketball. Cleveland shot is no good, and Tallman runs it down. Tallman turns around, has it tipped away, stumped with a steal. He doesn't see something. Unbelievable with a quickness, now it's knocked out of bounds, and it'll be Fairfield's basketball. We've got two of three of the outstanding guards in the entire state on the floor right now. Three of the very best. With the basketball now, Fairfield shot is up good by Joel Glory Lowenberg with her 22nd point of the ball game. Now that score is still not right. It's still not, you're right. 30. 33-30, Fairfield leading, but Terry Lynn gets two of them back. 
32, Fairfield on top. High a point. Right on top of the basketball, from free throw line. Lower first, takes the shot, good again. 24 points now for Lowenberg, 35 to 32, Fairfield on top, ball knocked loose, out of bounds, and it will be Fairfield basketball. So the Trojanets have come out strong here, and now Hoover wants to time out. 335 left to play, 35-32 the count, Fairfield on top of the Huskies, we'll be back after this. There's a new symbol in your community. A symbol that represents you, your cooperative, and Land O'Lakes, where the farm-to-food system begins. After having seen the sign and the purpose behind it, it's something that isn't dated or tied to any particular phase of agriculture. And the more I see it, the better I like it. It ties us in with the farm-to-food system. A symbol of a system. A symbol of people working together for a better America. floor to Dan Green, the Fairfield coach, as they break the huddle. You can see him. He's been very vociferous here tonight as he heads back to the bench, and he's all pumped up right now as his Fairfield girls are doing well. Now to the Hoover side. Now back at court side, it's 35-32, Fairfield on top, 335 left to play here in quarter number three. Georgia have come out strong here to begin the second half. You know, they were down seven points at 26-19 with 139 left in the first half. I still think the key factor, Laura Stump is back in the game. Five field goals for Laura Lorenberg in this quarter. Mm -hmm. I think 24 points for the ball game. Now I think they're maybe with some moisture on the floor. And they're going to take care of that. Lori Lohenberg wiping off her hands. Better not wipe them too much. She's no. got the hot hand right now. I was going to say, don't bother those hands. <laughs> it's like a surgeon. And now we're about set to go. The crowd is all revved up once again. 35-32. Fairfield puts the ball in play. Trojanets with the lead and with the basketball. Clements. Clements, incidentally, did a sensational job in the first half of taking over the major rebounding course and stop. Underneath, Lohenberg backs out, misses the shot. It's loose. Winget tries to save, but she went out of bounds with it. Jerry Winget couldn't get the ball back into play. And there's a look at the concerned Husky bench. Now, if you were sitting behind the basket, that's exactly how things would look. As Lohenberg takes the shot, it rims in and out. And there's a foul on a rebound. It's going to go against Cooper's Winget. That's three on Winget. I tell you, this Fairfield crowd is really getting into this thing now, Pete. There's right at 14,000 here tonight. We haven't got the official count yet. Bringing the, uh, the eight session total to about 76,000. Uh, just another great turnout for the Grove State Tournament. Lowenberg on the left side. Julie Lynch with the ball. Back to Lowenberg. Sam Litt still looking for her first point. Throws it up and in. Hamlet gets the basket, and Fairfield takes a five-point lead at 37 to 32. Jeanette Cleveland to the right side to Kerry Lynn. That's Tallman, and they call a foul on Tallman. Offensive foul. I, I think we need to take a look at this, and I sure hope they have. Here we go. She's going to back in. She's going to get her. Yes, I think she did come around with that shoulder and come in alone. There's a long pass into the forward court for Fairfield once again. Lohenberg gets it across to Julie Litton, and she'll take him to the left side to Lohenberg. Coming back the other way, Fairfield by 5, 2.30 to play. And now traveling is called on Pam Litton, so Hoover will get the basketball back. There have been three team fouls on Hoover and only two on Fairfield, so neither team is in the bonus situation yet with 2.29. Left to play in quarter number three, and it's 37 to 32. Fairfield on top. Wins it. Now Cleveland with the ball. Gary Lynn inside the free throw line. Good. 13 for Gary Lynn. 37 to 34 now. 
That was an awfully big bat. He's got momentum there. Hoover needed that, needed that bat. Pam Litton for Lowenberg. Nice fake. That's a double team. Pass on the left side to Lowenberg. Good. Julie Litton with a very nice feed. And Lori Lowenberg gets the basket for her 26 point. It's 39-34. Fairfield on top. Cleveland lobs it over to Kerry Lynn. Lynn takes it to Cleveland, who's open on the right side, and it's good. Jeanette Cleveland with 17, draws Hoover to within three with a minute and 31 seconds left to play. Shot by Pam Litton, goes awry, and Rudisil pulls it off of there for the Huskies, who can now close to within a point, 39-36. Gary Lynn, guarded by Stump, inside to Tallman, turns, shoots, and it won't drop. Clements with a rebound for Fairfield. Double team, but gets it over to Stump. And into front court to Pam Litton with one minute and two seconds left to play now in the third quarter. Julie Litton on the left side. Winget is covering her. Now she breaks three underneath and gets the layup. Beautiful play, beautiful pass all the way. All three girls involved in that offensive movement. 41 to 36, five point Fairfield lead. Inside to Tallman. Tallman into the lane off to Cleveland. He comes back toward the lane, tries to throw it into Tallman, but it's stolen away once again. Clements comes up with the ball to Stump. Stump breaks free from Terry Lynn, and Fairfield has the ball with 26 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Lohenberg off to Pam Litton. Julie's shot is on the way and good. Fairfield on the roll right now, 13 points. 17 seconds left to play as timeout is taken here. 43 to 36. Fairfield is on top of Hoover. We'll be back right after this message. The Great Midwest. Our crops help feed the world. What we're talking about is feeding the world. And we're sitting in the breadbasket of the world, and it's more than just raising corn and soybeans and hogs and cattle. We're talking about producing food to feed people. A lot of days it's past quitting time and you think you still want to go at it. So I, I guess I enjoy being able to, to feed people. You, your cooperative, and Land O'Lakes, where the farm to food system begins. Here's a look and a listen to the Hoover bench now. Let's go, come on. Let's go. Lundholm, and he was a pretty fair country football player at one time at the University of Missouri. Now he was telling me the other night how many bowl games he played in. I didn't know he had that much eligibility down there. I played baseball against him, and that's been a few years ago, too. He's a mighty fine baseball player. 16 seconds left to play. In quarter number three, it's 43-36 Fairfield. Hoover with the ball. Terry Lynn looking for Tallman and finds her at the free throw line. Tallman takes it in and is fouled. Blocking foul is called on Clement. We're going to look at it. Clement has done just a great job on Tallman tonight. But this time she gets just a little bit into her, throws the knee into the other knee right there. It's only the third team foul, though, so Hoover will have five seconds to either shoot or take it over again in the fourth quarter. Here's Cleveland as the horn sound ended the third quarter, and Fairfield has gone from a three-point deficit at halftime to a six-point lead or seven-point lead, 43-36. We'll be back with the final quarter in just a moment. You, your cooperative, and Land O'Lakes, where the efficiency experts help Iowa grow. If you don't have efficiency, you're not going to stay in the business very long. We feel that we have to stay efficient so we can understand the farmer's needs as it gets bigger. We're going to have to be efficient so that uh, we can survive. And those that do survive will be around a long time to help with this food link, the farm to food system. <laughs> There's a look at part of the crowd. Now let's check the Hoover huddle. Steve Rowe has to be concerned at this point. His team down by seven as we head into the final quarter of girls 
basketball for the season, Mike. Yes, and sir. And the, the last nine minutes, Fairfield's been awesome. They've outscored Hoover 24 to 10 the last nine minutes. Hoover had a 26-19 lead. Huskies will have possession of the basketball, trailing by seven. Eight minutes left to play. Cleveland on the right side, driving in, takes a shot and misses it as it comes off the side of the glass, and Fairfield has the ball. Lowenberg, top of the circle, moves to her left, comes back right. Pamlet shot, good. Pamlet with four points, and Fairfield has gone up by nine. Terry Lynn. Looks for Tallman, finds her, she turns, goes into the lane, sweeping shot is good. Joe Tallman with eight points, putting it through off the glass. Hoover back to within seven with 7.25 left to play in the game. Left side, Julie Lipton. Backdoor play to Pam, it's good for the layup. She has 15 points, 47 to 38. Fairfield up by nine. Cleveland. To carry Lynn, who breaks away from Stump, goes to Tallman, who turns around and shoots and misses. Rebound. Lori Lipton gets it ahead to Clements. Now the lob into front court. Pam Lipton on the left side to Julie. Nice fake. Up with a shot. Follow-up block, and a foul is called, and it's going to be on Wendell. That's her fourth. Fairfield is really dominating at both ends. Now, Tony Clement has Jill Tallman frustrated. Tallman only has six points for the ball game. And uh, if I get that last pass because of the club, and I do, that, I think she does have eight, but uh, she really had her frustrated underneath and uh, has missed some of the shots badly. Pam Litton makes good on the free throw attempt, giving her five points in the ball game and expanding the lead to 10. And making 11. Hamlet makes both free throws, has six, and Hoover is down by 11. Wins it in the front court. This is Cleveland over to Tallman, right back to Cleveland. Long shot, good. That was a big one also by Cleveland, her 19th point, 49 to 40. Dan Breen, the Fairfield coach, very animated on the far side of the floor. He's constantly up. Telling instructions to his players, ball tipped away, and it will be Fairfield basketball. Coach Dan Breen has built a great program at Fairfield. They've lost one game in the regular season the last four years. Well, that's not too bad. Off it goes to Lowenberg. You know what? He's not satisfied. He'd like to have won that one. Lowenberg chasing the ball, but Winston comes up with it for Hoover. 49-40, 6.05 to play. Tallman, quarter court on the far side, gives to Carrie Lynn. Lynn at the free throw line to Tallman. Back to Lynn, driving underneath. Gets it out to Cleveland, no shot yet. She goes down the lane, and it rolls off. Rebound to Fairfield. Clements again, Mike with a rebound. That's 11, I think, maybe 12. Forward court. Julie Lynn to Pam, to Lowenberg. Lowenberg. Over to Pamlet. Back to Julie. Drives, tries to pass underneath, but she threw it away. There's some contact, and a couple of girls hit the floor, but no foul is called. It'll simply be Hoover's basketball inbound. You notice there's no inclination on, the, on Fairfield's part to slow down the tempo now. They're playing the way they want to play now. They're running, and they're running, and they're running at both ends. 49 to 40. Terry Lynn puts the ball over. To Lynn. Inside the Tallman. Gary Lynn takes it toward the lane and beats Cleveland. Right back to Lynn. Tallman again. Third shoots and rolls it off. Stump for the rebound for Fairfield. 49 40. Fairfield on top. Pass into the forward court. Pam Lynn gets it to Lowenberg and I believe it's. Fairfield is going to pull it out a little bit. Now they're not. Might be running a little backdoor drill here pretty quickly, but Rudisville stays back in the lane for Hoover. Of course, Fairfield can bend less than a second to tick off that clock, Mike. Yeah, I, I really called that, didn't I? Over it goes, and a foul is called on Hoover, and going to the free throw line will be Pam Litton. A foul is on Kay McCurgan. That was a long way from a delay, though. They're still going back, Dork. 
It's 49 to 40, Fairfield leading Hoover, and we'll be back with more of the fourth quarter after this. Without the coffee, you probably wouldn't be the small town. Well, what it means is a lot of jobs in the community. So all this money goes back into your schools, back into your churches. Like a lot of small towns in Iowa, it's the only industry in town. Small towns, cooperative, land the lakes. They're all part of the great Midwest, where the farm to food system begins. Let's try to get in the Fairfield huddle with Dan Breen. Now let's check the Hoover Huskies with Steve Rowe. Four and a half minutes left to play here in the championship game of the girls state basketball tournament. Consolation game won tonight by Ford Dodge over Hartley Melvin 80 to 73 and right now Fairfield the number one ranking team throughout the season is on top by nine and at the free throw line will be Pam Lipton who has six points in the foul shooting department she is two of two. Of course she's the younger sister of both Laurie and Julie who are senior twins. 5'8 junior misses this free throw attempt and Hoover has life as it's tipped out of bounds and it will be Hoover's basketball. Carrie Lynn moves over to inbound it in the forward court. Bill Elliott and Jack Schultz, the two officials for tonight's game from Fredericksburg as Lynn drives and has the ball roll off the rim. Lori Litton pulls it off and gets it into the forward court of Fairfield. Lowenberg. The free throw line she turns around, finds Pam Litton. Back to Lowenberg. Two play catch with it. Lowenberg moves in. Gives it back to Julie Litton to Lowenberg. Yep. Now here Julie Litton gives to Lowenberg. Right back to Julie. They've got somebody open. It's Pam up with a shot. It's no good, but she is fouled, and that's what an effective delay game does look for the open layup and that time almost got it but there was a foul call well what they're doing is they're waiting until they make Pam Rudisill commit out of that middle the minute she commits they go to the basket Hoover doesn't like to go man to man they're a zone team when Pam Rudisill comes up Fairfield goes directly to the basket Kelly Cron picks up the foul that is her fourth at the free throw line again is Pam Litton up and in 50 to 40 Pam Litton has seven points in this ball game it's 50 to 40 and she still has seven as she misses on her second attempt 10 point Fairfield lead with 342 to go Gallman over to Cleveland Cleveland free throw line gives to Kerry Lynn back to Gallman the lane and she gets that left-handed shot in. Norman has her 10th point and it's 50 to 42, still the eight-point margin for Fairfield. And the Trojanettes have the basketball in the forward court. Pam Litton and Julie Litton and Lowenberg have gone virtually the entire way. Dina Holt was in for a brief time in the first half. Here's Julie Litton. We still got rid of still playing the middle. They won't come out. They won't go to the basket until she comes out to play and play now. 2.58 to go. Cross court pass to Pam Litton. Right side, Julie Litton has the ball. And to Lowenberg. And now the foul and reaching in is called on Winget, I believe, or no. Check it. Not Winget. Beth Doty gets caught for the foul. Beth Doty, a 5 4 junior. Hoover calls a timeout here with 2.48 remaining. It's 50 to 42. Fairfield will return right after this. There's a new symbol in your community. A symbol that represents you, your cooperative, and Land the Lakes, where the farm to food system begins. After having seen the sign and the purpose behind it, it's something that isn't dated or tied to any particular phase of agriculture and the more I see it the better I like it. 
that ties us in with the farm to food system. A symbol of a system. A symbol of people working together for a better America. Steve Rowe in the Des Moines Hooper huddle. The pressure has to be applied now, Mike, in order for Hoover to have a chance of winning this ball game. Well, they were going to go three on two out in front of them all day if the Pam Mutasil didn't relinquish that position deep under the basket in the zone. So I imagine to see her come out probably pretty hard in pressure. She's the kind of an athlete that can bother badly. Lori Lowenberg will be at the free throw line. Senior forward with 26 points in tonight's game. She is four of seven at the free throw line. Shooting a one and one. And makes the first one during the bonus. 27 for Lowenberg, and the lead is nine for Fairfield, 51 to 42. And Fairfield's going for a 29 straight win. And the loss, losses look like they may end up with a big goose egg. 52 to 42. Beth Doty has to go off her fingertips, and it's saved back into play, and Fairfield comes away with it. And now a traveling violation is called. The whistle was sounded and amid all the noise. The girls had to pause for a moment after the action had continued. And Fairfield is caught for the travel. Rudisil plays it in. Doty with the basketball. Works it ahead to Cleveland. Behind the defense is Tallman for the layup. No good. Rolls off. Stump. Works the ball over. Litton. Ahead to Julie Litton. The Lowenberg, 2.15 to go now. Fairfield in control of the game and in control of the basketball at the moment. Pamlet, front to Lowenberg, lost her dribble, but bats it away. It's picked up by Pam, who lays it in. Pam Litton got that loose basketball as it was knocked around by several players. At 54-42, Tallman hits the basket for Hoover at the other end. Her 12 points, 54-44. Time running out for the Huskies, though. A minute 48 to play. Trying to backdoor it again, and a foul is called on Doty. And going to the line will be Pam Litton. Her second foul, and Pam Litton will shoot. Back into the lineup, Sherry Winget. And she replaces Kay McCurgan. We're looking at a pretty concerned bench right there now. One and one for Pam Litton. And the ball will not drop. Ludicill with a rebound. No Hoover still has life. 54-44 into front court. Kerry Lynn with the basketball to Cleveland. Norman in the lane. No good again. And the rebound comes off to Litton. Lori Litton to Clement. 54-44. Lynn tries for the steal, but Clement comes up with it in the guard court. Now to Stump, who hooks the pass over, and Doty commits the foul, and it will send Pam Litton go back. There's a shot of concern right there. <laughs> this is a little bit different than most coaching arrangements. Both coaches, the head coach handles the forwards, and the assistant coach the guard. Steve Lundholm handles the Hoover forward, and Steve Rowe the guard. Free throw is good by Pam Litton, and she is in double figures now with her 10th point. 55 to 44, up. No good this time, and Rudisil gets yet another rebound for Hoover. 11-point lead with 1.14 to go. Fairfield in the driver's seat right now. Cleveland behind the defense is Lynn, and she gets the bank shot. Nice athletic movement there by Kerry Lynn as she went up in the air and got it in off the glass. 55 to 46. 57 seconds left to play, and the Fairfield crowd is sensing a victory here as a foul is called on Rudisil, and she immediately runs over to make sure that Julie Litton is okay. But she bumped her noggin a little bit, but she's up all right, and we'll get two shots. As the celebration is starting right under the basket, they're shooting at it. Julie Litton at the free throw line. Get two shots. At 
And it's good on the first attempt. Fifty-six to forty-six. This will try it again. It's good again. He has fifteen. Fifty-seven to forty-six. Hoover almost lost the ball. Rudisill had it go off his hands, and she did. Ball for the violation, and Fairfield will get the ball with fifty seconds left to play. Hoover has no choice but to foul, and. Immediately, that's what happens. Beth Doty commits the foul. I don't know when she came in, but she's picked up four fouls. And off. 48 seconds hanging on the clock, and Fairfield leads 57 to 46. Julie Lipp goes to the free throw line. Makes it on the first attempt. The 846. And it is good again. 17 points now for Lippin. 59 46. 45 seconds to go. Three pointer. Cleveland has it go high off the rim. Clements with a rebound. Being guarded by Tallman. He lobs it ahead and is fouled by Bill Tallman. 38 seconds to play. And here come the reserves into the lineup. Lori Litton leaves, and she's replaced by Diane McIndoe. Oh, that's and Coach Dan Breen. I think he's he's about to think he's got it wrong. He's going to find another senior this time, I'll bet. Stephanie Hall will check in, and she will replace Joni Clements, who has done an exceptional job in the rebounding department tonight. You think that's not a happy bench beat? A state championship, it looks like inevitable for the Fairfield Trojanettes. And conversely, things are not quite as happy on the Hoover bench as you might expect. The free throw is no good with 35 seconds to go. Here's Cleveland, 13-point lead for Fairfield. Terry Lynn behind the three-point range, lets it fly, it's short. Knocked around, Cleveland gets it back and puts it through. Yes, 21, it's 59 to 48. Lowenberg with the ball as Fairfield counts it down to the foul on Winston. 16 seconds to play, and the happiness continues on the Fairfield side of the floor. And we're having the Hoover Reserves come in, too, Pete. A few tears will be shed both ways, I'm sure, but Fairfield is, one of out is an outstanding state champion, Pete. Uh, I've said it many times this week on different radio interviews. I think it's the best guard court I've ever seen in girls basketball. They've got quickness, they've got jumping ability, cause so many turnovers, and take it just out of your game plan totally. Free throw, no good by Lori Lowenberg. 59 to 48. Lowenberg shooting and hitting this side. That gives her 29, 60 to 48. And she leads the lineup into the happy arms of Dan Green, the Fairfield coach. In the Hoover guard court, we have reserves. We'll try to pick these people up. Inetra Singer is in there. Also, P.J. Campbell. And Kelly Cron is back in the lineup. And she has the basketball. Ahead it goes, a near steal, but Tallman comes up with it. Cleveland lobs to Tallman, and she is fouled. Going underneath, the foul is committed by Fairfield Stephanie Hall. So, Hoover not yet in the one and one situation. And the Hoover bench pretty much resigned to the fact, I think, that this game is over with eight seconds to go. But what a tournament Hoover has had coming from third in the Metro Conference all the way to the state final and led at halftime by three points. Cleveland, three-pointer from long range, no good. Follow-up is good by Kerry Lynn. One second to go, and it is history now. Fairfield wins it 60 to 50. Well, you can see the contrast in the motion. Hoover girls controlling each other, and it's Bedlam at the other end for Fairfield, which we have 
grown to expect year after year at the girls state basketball tournament Mike yes and uh, as I say both teams extremely deserving uh, I thought it was a well played game uh, particularly the second half Fairfield really won it the first the last minute of the first half and the first and the end of, to the end of the third quarter that nine minute stretch is where they really put it together they were down seven and then went up about seven I think you're right also though yeah, talking yeah. about Laura Stump in the first half having to sit out and then getting back into the lineup there was a big change in the way things happened for Fairfield after that point even though they took her off of Cleveland and put her on Terry Lynn and seemed to bother Terry a little more in the second half. I think as I mentioned when they did it I think that may have been the best matchup to start with because Terry Lynn makes so much of the initial movement of the offense and, and when he got her pretty well bottled down it was that. All right, now let's go down to the PA man for the girls state tournament, George Turner. Now let's go to the floor for the presentation of the all tournament teams. Here's Frosty Mitchell. One of the toughest jobs at this year's state tournament was the picking of the all-tournament team. The all-tournament team is selected by the media, the radio, television, and newspaper people that have been here since Tuesday. And it's 16 votes as the vote goes to each of the schools in the Sweet 16. Let's salute now the 1983 all-tournament team. At forward, a young lady who finished third in the tournament in scoring. She missed the all-time free throw record by only three. Cover of Des Moines, Jeanette Cleveland. <laughs> and forward on the all-tournament team, this young lady comes to us as the writer of the Cinderella story, 1983. The second leading scorer in the state tournament from Hartley, Melvin, Judy Meyer. young lady was the best kept sports secret in the state of Iowa. No longer, she's all tournament. 1983 from Dubuque senior, Mary Gedkin. <laughs> and in the forward court, the number one scorer, the winner of the scoring derby from Fort Dodge, Melanie Brewer. In the guard court, this young lady joins a very select group in girls basketball history, a repeater from last year's all-tournament team, Laura Stump of Fairfield. All-tournament guard, a young lady that's team played in only two ball games. But in eight quarters of basketball, she had 10 interceptions, 15 rebounds, and three block shots. From Columbus of Waterloo, Brenda Bresky. Another young lady in that guard court from Fairfield, she led this tournament in interceptions. The absolute master of disaster, Joni Clement.
The Iowa girls basketball team is full of traditions. One of the greatest traditions of all is a coat of honor, not just a jacket, but a coat of honor that carries the logo of champion of the Iowa State Sweet 16. With that jacket, our lovely cover girl Angie Peterson from Ballard of Huxley to the winning coach, the head man, Dan Green. and gentlemen for what they all came last Tuesday the trophies and to make that presentation of the most beautiful trophies in high school sports anywhere in America the president of the board of directors of the Iowa girls high school athletic union mr. David Owens of Wapsie Valley our congratulations to all of the tournament teams and for those of you that did not make it this year wait till next year but now, the consolation runner-up, Hartley Melvin Hockett and Coach Mark Butt. Consolation champion, 